Facebook. Called you up first this time. Gotta get pair of soap ready. To talk about what the Holy Ghost has to say today. Okay, so one second. Uh, we'll get this going. And there we go. What's up, Periscope? All right, Periscope and Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here. Here for your weekly live prophetic word. Don't worry about my shirt. <laughs> Wipe some stuff off so cause it's still a little wet. That's all right. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so I say it uh, every week that I ask the Lord, what does he want to say? I ask the Holy Spirit, what does he want released? <clears throat> because if the Holy Spirit ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying anything. If the Holy Ghost doesn't have anything to say, I don't have anything to say because it's about him. Remember that the Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, is here to say what Jesus says because Jesus is in heaven now. He doesn't walk to earth uh, in a physical form. He doesn't walk to earth as a man like he once did. So, <clears throat> but we still need to hear from him. We still need to understand what the Lord is saying. We still need his leadership. We still need all that. So the Lord sent the Holy Ghost back so that the Spirit of God can indwell all of us at the same time and so that we would have a connection to him in heaven. So the Spirit of God only speaks when he hears the Christ speaking. And when the Spirit of God speaks to a prophet, that's him speaking. That's not us. Okay? <clears throat> so the prophetic word for today is fathers. Prophetic word for today is fathers. Now, before I pray, I strongly encourage you to do a couple of things. I encourage you to watch this with your father. And I encourage you, if you are a father, to watch this with your children. One more time. I encourage you, if your father's still alive, to watch this broadcast. Either watch me live now or watch it on the replay. Watch it with your dad. If you are a dad, then I strongly, strongly encourage you to watch this broadcast with your children. Either watch me live now or watch the replay. Why do I say that? <clears throat> because there's going to be some deliverance. There's going to be some things said that you haven't heard before. Maybe some things that you haven't thought of. But it's going to make the difference when the prophet of God shows up, when the prophetic word of the Lord shows up, because it's not really important whose mouth it comes through. But when the prophetic word comes, to, comes through and the prophet of God shows up, time is split from before the way you were, before you heard the word, and after. And your entire life's about to change by listening to this broadcast right now. Okay? You're not going to be the same after you hear what is said today. So you need to listen to it with your dad, if he's available, or if you are, and or if you are a dad, listen to it with your children. Okay? All right, the prophetic word for today is fathers. We're going to say a word of prayer and jump right in. Thank you, Father God, that you are the ultimate father. Thank you that we have access to you that we can sit on your lap and call you daddy because of Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for all that you went through to make that possible. We can't thank you enough, and we don't ever want to take it for granted. We want to give you the worship and the praise that your name so rightly deserves. So I crucify myself, I die to myself. Lord, I must decrease so that you might increase. So speak through me now and let the words spoken be the words that you want and the things that you want said that you might change the lives of all who listen. Oh God, that you might challenge them, comfort them, heal them, and deliver them, deliver them by the power of your mighty word and by the power of your spirit, that you might get the glory in all things. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it, and I'm excited about it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. The prophetic word. <laughs> Certainly I'll watch it with your father. The prophetic word. For today is fathers okay now we're going to look at our scripture references and then we're going to do some deep dives into exegeting the scripture but also into the prophetic with what the Holy Ghost has to say the first scripture we're going to look, look uh, at is Ephesians 6 4 Ephesians 6 4 
that's a very uh, familiar scripture, but you're going to hear some things and some ideas you never heard about it before today. Ephesians 6, 4. Okay, I'm going to read out of a couple of different translations. Now, as you know, the book of Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul, and he wrote it to a group of Christians at in the city of Ephesus. That's why the book of Ephesians is called Ephesians. Okay, because the Apostle Paul, it's a letter, it's an epistle. It's one of the Pauline epistles or letters that he wrote to the church at Ephesus. That's why it's called Ephesians. And also remember that the original manuscript does not have chapters and verses. Chapters and verses were added later. It's a letter, okay? So even though we can zoom in on particular chapters and verses, it wasn't written that way. It's continual thoughts. Same way you write a letter or an email, okay? All right, so we're going to look at Ephesians 6 and 4. Uh, first translation is the Berean Study Bible. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Instead, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Uh, New King James Version, and you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Uh, New Living Translation, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. <clears throat> now, first thing I want to say is that some of you looking at me right now, you need to forgive your dad. Your father was a flawed human being. Your father was clay and breath. Your father was born in sin like every human since Adam. And your father didn't do everything right. And some of you looking at me right now, you don't understand that when you carry anger and unforgiveness and bitterness, it doesn't just take root in your heart. It takes root in your life. Okay, and you can look at many areas in your life and see where it's reflected. What do I mean by that? Some of you looking at me right now have eating disorders. You have eating disorders because you're so angry and you're angry because you don't feel good about yourself and you don't feel good about yourself because you never quite feel like you got the approval of your dad and you're still holding that against him. Okay, now I'm going to show you one of my favorite scriptures. Okay. This scripture is, when thy father and thy mother forsake thee, then the Lord will take thee up. That is Psalm 27 and 10. Psalm 27 and 10. Even if my father and my mother abandon me or forsake me, then the Lord will take me up or hold me close. Now, that's true, but that's not the perfect will of God. So I read that scripture to you to let you know that the Lord can fill in the slack. The Lord can give you the love that you need. The Lord can give you the training that you need. Anything that you feel like you might be missing from your childhood, God can give it to you, but that's not his perfect will. God wants to be God to you, and then mom and daddy be mom and daddy to you. But in case your father didn't do everything he was supposed to do, and none of our fathers did, because again, our fathers aren't perfect, you need to forgive them. If you are still carrying that, that's why you eat yourself into a coma because you don't feel good about yourself down on the inside, because you never got that stamp of approval from your dad. If you overspend, sometimes the reason that you spend money is because you're, you're trying to make yourself feel better. It's a, a form of medication. Do you know why? Because what you really want is a hug. <laughs> what you really want is your dad to put his arms around you and tell you that he loves you and tell you that he's proud of you. Tell you that when he looks at you, he likes what he sees. Tell you that you are accepted because you are my son or my daughter. That's why you spend all that money. Because that anger, that bitterness, that, that hole in your heart that's supposed to be filled with your father's words is empty and, and it's hurting. And that's what I mean when I say roots of bitterness. When people say bitterness, it doesn't just mean a bad attitude or a bad temper. It starts to permeate your whole life. And you'll find yourself spending money trying to prove things or just trying to make yourself feel better. You'll find yourself getting into real bad habits like substance abuse. Because you feel so bad in your soul 
you, you want something to help you feel good. And that's why you started getting high. And that's why you started getting lit. And that's why you started being promiscuous. Because that stuff feels good, but it's just a band-aid. It's not really dealing with the real issue. And the real issue is, is because you never got that stamp of approval from your dad. Well, the first thing you need to do to facilitate healing is you need to forgive him. I know you don't want to. I know you don't want to. All of us have a laundry list of all the things my parents did wrong. Every child has a list of, if you ask anybody with a mother and a father, which is everybody, if you ask them, they can tell you like that, all the things my parents did wrong. And you keep that list until you become a parent that all of a sudden looks different to you then, okay? You need to tear that list up. I know you don't want to, but that's the commandment of the Lord. Why? Now, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost always model what they tell us to do first. Father God is the perfect Father because He doesn't just say things. He actually models what He says. So when God tells you to tear up your list, it's because He tore up the list of your sins. God does not command us to forgive based on whether or not the person is worthy of forgiveness. God commands us to forgive so that we don't have to stay in jail to what happened. And if you are holding your father's sins in your heart, I, I stop by to tell you, you're still in jail to what happened. And Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost want to set you free. You no longer have to see, oh, See, I feel that freedom coming as I'm saying it. I feel the anointing flowing as, as I'm saying it. You don't have to live the rest of your life in jail to the failures of your earthly father. But to facilitate the healing, first step is you got to forgive him. You have to tear up that list of all the ways my father failed me. That's step number one. Step number two is you need deliverance. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said, you need deliverance. Well, what does that mean? You might have heard that word, but you not, might not know what that means. Deliverance means that any uh, place the devil has in your life, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> any stronghold, any place where, where the devil is whispering in your ear and you're listening, any place where you've got a habit that's of the flesh that's carnal, any place in your soul that's broken and hurting, that's a stronghold of the enemy, okay? Uh, the enemy is trying to oppress you, squeeze you, hurt you, keep your life small, keep you in jail. You need deliverance from them spirits because them is demons, them is spirits. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you walk in bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, you open the door for unclean spirits to come in your life. And when they come in your life like that, it's, it's going to permeate. It's going to even be in your living space. You can walk in the home of someone that's bitter and feel the bitterness in the room. They don't even have to say nothing because some spirits of bitterness are all around. So the second thing you need to do is you need to get the demons cast out of your life. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do it with you, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First thing you want to do if you want to break off the spirit is you got to call it by name. Okay? You can't just say demons leave. That nah, don't mean nothing. You have to say, in the name of Jesus, you got to call the Lord's name because his name is the name above every name. You can't cast them out in your name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the true and the living God, I command the spirit of bitterness to depart, break off me, break off my mind, get out of my heart, get out of my soul. In Jesus' name, I break the power of bitterness. In Jesus' name, I break the power of regret. In Jesus' name, I break the power of guilt. See, I see I'm feeling it as I'm saying it. I'm feeling the power of God flowing, flowing through my own soul. And I break the power of looking back in the past. Because God doesn't look backward, and time does not flow backwards. Life keeps moving forward. Your day is going to keep piling up. You can keep looking in the rearview mirror if you want to. But that's not the way life is flowing. Life flowing forward, and God's looking forward. So you've got to break the power in the name of Jesus of looking back in the past. 
And when you do that, you will feel them spirits come out of you. You will feel that pain come out of your heart and your soul. You got to do it just like I showed you. You got to call the name of the Lord. You got to say in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the true and the living God, identify the king of kings, not just anybody named Jesus, talking about the living son of God. Okay. And then you got to call them spirits out by name, bitterness, regret, anger, looking back in the past, uh, call out a spirit of brokenness, say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and, and reprove any spirit of brokenness in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. I will no longer walk in brokenness, but I receive a spirit of wholeness in the name of Jesus. That's what you got to do to get deliverance and you will feel it instantly. You ain't got to wait no 10 and 15 and 20 and 30 years because some of y'all look at me right now, you've been mad at your dad for 10, you've been mad at your dad for decades, 10 and a 15 and a 20 and 30 years. You don't have to do that. You can get deliverance right now. Okay, God will deliver you right now. Okay, you don't have to wait. And you can get that broken off of your life and you will feel it immediately. Okay, so you have to, number one, you got to forgive them. Number two, you got to get deliverance, brokenness from them spirits. But you have to call unclean spirits out by name. And you got to rebuke them and call them out in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me another spirit. In the name of Jesus, we call out and rebuke the spirit of violence. Some of y'all are violent because your father was, father was violent towards you. Chastisement and discipline is one thing. Child abuse and violence is something else. And some of y'all looking at me right now or some of you that are going to be watching the broadcast, your father was violent towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we break the spirit of violence. Okay? And we speak healing. Uh, and we speak wholeness so that there is no more violence. Because if you don't do that, you're going to take it out on your kids. I know everybody says I'm going to be better than my parents. I know everybody says I'm not. When I become a parent, I ain't going to do this, blah, 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 blah. I stop by to tell you, you need to be sure you break off everything that you might have been carrying so that you don't duplicate the things because you, you, you tend to remember things that happen to you until you break off and break the power of it. And you can only do that by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's already broken the power, so you're just claiming what is already yours in him. Okay? So number one, you've got to forgive your dad. Number two, you've got to get deliverance from bitterness, anger, violence, regret, guilt, looking back in the past. Okay? And here comes number three. Number three is that scripture I just showed you, Psalm 2710. You have to begin to receive the Lord's fathering. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about and another revelation I wanted to give. Some of y'all looking at me right now, and it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Some of y'all looking at me right now, <clears throat> we have projected how our earthly or biological fathers treated us onto Father God. <coughs> and so sometimes if your father didn't love you, or if you had one of those dads who only showed up when it was time to whoop you, and he, he went around all the time, or if you have one of those dads where it's like he never has anything good to say. Like, if you do something wrong, he's all on you with all that criticism. And if you do something right, he ain't got nothing to say. Now, personally, I don't understand that. I don't understand why people parent like that, but a lot of people parent like that. Okay? When your kids do something right, all of a sudden you're silent. If they do something wrong, you're going to beat them up and down the hall. No. Well... It's easy if you've been treated that way in your formative years to think that Father God is like that. No, he's not. He's gentle. He's kind. He's patient. He's merciful. He's loving and he believes in you. He sees the best in you, which is his image, what he created you in. And he's going to keep speaking to the best in you until that best comes out. Now, yes, he has to prune you. He has to cut you. But when Father God cuts you, it's to cut off the dead part of you, the dead wood, the deadness. That is the pruning of Father God, not to destroy you. And even if the process is painful, he's doing that so that you can bear more fruit, 
so you can be more healthy, more whole, more happy, more productive. But he himself is gentle and kind and, and, and speaks with a very still, small voice when the Spirit of God speaks. It's very, very quiet. And, and he, Jesus is the good shepherd and he gives his life for the sheep. And you may have grown up in a house with a lot of noise. So we need to break that spirit too. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we break the spirit of noise and the spirit of confusion. In the name of Jesus, come out. Okay, come off my mind. Come off my heart. Come out of my soul. No more noise. No more yelling. Because some of y'all grew up in a pit of noise. No more noise. No more yelling. No more confusion. That's not Father God. But again, the third thing I'm on right now, you have to receive his love because he's not going to make you obey him. Okay? Father God is going to open his hand and offer. He's going to offer you a better life. He's going to offer you his love. He's going to offer you his grace. He's going to offer you his wisdom, but you have to receive it. That's the thing. And if you're used to going through life with your, with your dukes up, <laughs> with your fists up, you're used to throwing hands, because it was like that with your dad, that's why you have to break all that off of you so that you can receive, because it's not gonna do you any good if you don't receive it. You ought to be able to look in the world around you and understand that God does not force people to serve him. If God forced us to serve him, wouldn't be no racism, wouldn't be no killing, wouldn't be no nothing. God does not force us to serve him. We have to choose. And he is gentle and kind. And you might not be used to somebody being gentle and kind to you. That's the thing. But Father God is gentle and kind. He's going to open that, his mighty hand. And he's going to offer you his love and his grace and his mercy. You see that? Okay. So there's that part. Okay. So uh, let me go back to my original scripture in Ephesians 6, 4, uh, where it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Now, the way we as fathers provoke our children to anger, what that means in a practical sense, <clears throat> because when I was young, I heard a lot of platitudes and I heard a lot of really religious stuff, but I didn't hear a lot of practical, like, like what do I do about it? So I promised myself that if I, God ever called me to ministry, I was going to get practical components. You know, not just all the scripture quoting, but how do I apply the word of God? Okay. When the Bible says, do not provoke your children to anger, what that means as a dad is that what I said before, it's like if you never have anything good to say, if you make your children feel like they can't please you, no matter what they do, that's going to provoke them to anger. If you make your children feel like you don't accept who they are, because I want you to understand something as a father. We, we might sire them. God uses the seed from our body, but we do not actually make the children. God actually makes children. He uses the seed of the man and the egg and the womb of the woman because that's what he set up. But he's actually the one that makes people. We don't make people. And if you don't believe that, ask a pregnant woman, what color are your child's eyes? She don't know. Ask a pregnant woman when your child is 10 years old, how tall are they going to be? She don't know. Ask a pregnant woman, how much musical skill does your child have? What kind of sense of humor does your unborn child have? She don't know. She has to wait till that baby comes out and she has to learn her child just like anybody else. Okay, there's your proof that we do not actually make the children. Because if we made them, you know all that. We don't make the children. That Actually, God makes the children. He uses our reproductive system, which he doesn't need, but that's the system he set up. When a man releases his seed inside of a woman, Father God, there's, there's hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of sperm cells. Father God is the one that picks the sperm cell that's going to penetrate the egg because in that sperm cell is the genetic code from your dad that he wants you to have because he wants you to look a certain way. He wants you to be born in a certain year and there's things in your bloodline he wants to bless you with. So Father God actually puts his hand on that seed and decides that's the one that's going to fertilize your mother's egg and then over the course of nine months it turns into you. That's why the Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made because that process just blows my mind. Everything about that just whoosh, just blows my mind every time a child is made. You see that? So we don't make the children. So you have to learn how to love and accept who God gave you because you're going to get to decide that. 
I'm finna get really real right now. I, I know some of you, uh, some of you have sons and you wanted daughters. I know some of you had daughters and you wanted sons. That's why some girls have a variation on a boy's name. If you notice that some girls, I know that's not true in every case, but some girls, their father wanted a son so bad. So he named his daughter, what he would have named the son and then put an A on it or an Eda or an Ella on it. Okay. You have to learn how to accept the child that God gave you. Okay. Nothing wrong with wanting sons, nothing wrong with wanting daughters, but whatever child God gave you, he gave you that child for a reason. And that child has the personality that they do for a reason. And it's a divine reason. So what you don't want to do as a father while your kid is growing up is make your child feel bad about themselves. Because God made them who he wanted them to be. Let's say you come from a family of hotheads. You got a quick temper. The mama got a quick temper. Your daddy had a quick temper. Your grandpappy had a quick temper, and you give birth to a child that's calm and serene. They really don't get upset about too much. That's on purpose. God gave you that calm child to counterbalance the fact that everybody else in the family is hot head. Did you know that? Some people, you come from like sports families, like your father played football, your grandfather played football, uh, your mother and, and your sisters, everybody loved football. You have a shrine in your house. You have a room in your house dedicated to your favorite football team. And here you come and you want to be a lawyer. <laughs> and you got to have that conversation with your parents one day. And you say, Mom, Dad, I love you, but, but I, I'm not going into football. I want to practice law. Okay? That's on purpose. If you come from a football family and God gave you a lawyer child, that's on purpose. That child is going to grow up and bless you. That child is going to grow up and bless you in ways that you can't even imagine when they're a baby. They're supposed to be who they are. Are you hearing me? We don't get to decide who the kids are. Maybe you wanted a girly girl and maybe your daughter is a talented athlete. Maybe you didn't want a daughter that was an athlete. Maybe you wanted a girly girl. Maybe she's not a girly girl at all. Maybe she's like, well, I want to get out there and play sports. Love that girl. That's the girl God gave you. Okay? And so as fathers, we have to learn that we must accept the children that God gave us, the children that God sent to your body, because he's the one that picked one of your sperm cells, and he's the one that decided which one was going to penetrate the mother's egg and become that person that's on purpose and you might not see that purpose for years to come so that's why in the childhood years you have to learn how to love and accept the child that god gave you and teach them how to love and accept themselves but if you don't do that you're going to provoke them to anger when your father makes you feel like he doesn't accept who you are when your father makes you feel like he he wishes you were somebody else when your father makes you feel like that, that causes all that pain that we just rebuked him, that we're healing from, well, that's what causes it. When you treat your child that way, that is not the godly way to be a dad. Father God made you exactly who you're supposed to be. You might come from a family of tall people and you're the shortest one in your family. You're supposed to be. You might come from a family of really, really dark people really, really dark people and you're light skinned. You're supposed to be. Or flip the script because that used to be a thing in the African American community. I don't know if it still is now, but I know it used to be a thing when I was growing up. And you might come from a family of light skinned people, we used to call them yellow hammers and red bones. You might come from a family of black people with red hair and green eyes. Okay? And your father might be light skin and your mama might be light skin and you dark like Swiss chocolate. You're supposed to be because that's the way Father God made you. But as a father, again, you must learn how to accept the children that God gave you because he did that on purpose. And then kids are going to bless you. You love them and raise them the way you're supposed to when they're young. 
when they get grown, they're going to bless you in ways that you never imagined. Which leads me to the next part of this verse, last part of Ephesians 6 and 4. But it says, do not provoke your children to anger, but instead bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now that word discipline, it's also translated nurture in some translations. Okay, it's from a Greek word, 3809 in your Strong's. It says it means tutorage, education or training by implication, disciplinary correction. Okay, and instruction, warning, admonition, counsel. Okay, calling attention to mild rebuke or warning. So once again, what does that mean practically? Let me show you what that means practically. Teaching is where I put it in your head. Training is where I put it in your hand. Okay, let me say it again. Teaching is where I put something in your head. Teaching is ideas and concepts. Training is when I teach you how to do it, when I give you the skill, when I put it in your hand. So you can't just, you have to talk to your kids about the things you want them to know, but you can't just talk. <laughs> you can't just talk. So if you want to teach your kids about money, you can't just talk about money. You have to show them what to do with money. I'll give you an example. Uh, my son's on, my son can corroborate this. When my son was very little, the way I taught him to tithe and give was I told him what we do is we take a dime out of every dollar. So every time we get money, we take a dime out of every dollar off the top. That's called our tithe. And then we give God a little bit more. That's called our offering. And my son looked at me and said, Dad, are you sure this will work? I said, I'm sure. And if you put this money that somebody gave you in the tithes and offerings, God is going to give you a harvest. And sure enough, okay, either within 24 hours or three days, my son got a lot back more than he sold. And he's been tithing and offering ever since. Because I, I didn't just talk the concept. I showed him, I showed him, this is what we do, son. This is how to do it. And then this is what you get in return. You see that? So teaching is I put it in your head. Training is I put it in your hand. Teaching, I teach you the ideas and the kind. Okay, same day, right. My son got his harvest, same day. So teaching, I give you the concepts at the church, right. Uh, training is I give you the skill. As a father, that's your job. Not just your job. I know the mama some does, does some of that too. But I'm going to talk to you in a minute while the Bible keeps addressing fathers. Okay? That's your job if you the daddy. It's always amazed me. Always amazed me how some parents expect their kids just to know stuff. But you never taught them and you never trained them. I don't understand that. I didn't understand it when I was a child. And I'm good and grown now and I still don't understand it. I don't understand that. How are you going to get mad at them for something that you didn't teach them? How are you going to get mad at them for something that you never trained them to do? You can't train your kids to just sit around and get everything handed to them and then get mad at them because they're not industrious and hardworking and they don't have a work, work ethic. You did that. You sat around and you didn't make them work for nothing. You just gave them everything. Now they don't know how to work for nothing and now you are mad. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, how about no? So that's why the Bible says, if you're a dad, you don't provoke them to anger. You don't dislike them or not like who they are or that, don't do that. But rather teach, put the concept in the head and train, put the skill in the hand. Then the Bible says the teaching and the training or nurture and admonition of the Lord. What does that mean? That means that you're supposed to teach your children about God, you the daddy. Now, I'm going to say this. Some of y'all know this, and some of y'all, this is the first time in your life you ever heard somebody say it. But I told you, your life was going to change from listening to this broadcast today. Okay? Your father is your first five-fold minister. If you are a dad and you're watching this, you are your child's five-fold minister. What do I mean by that? You are your child's first apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. It's your dad. It's your dad's job to apostle your soul. Apostle means sent one. Your father is the one sent from God to raise you. Did you know that? Your father is your first prophet. Your father is supposed to speak the word of the Lord into your life. 
your father is your first evangelist. He's the one that's supposed to lead you to the Lord. And again, my son is on. I led my son to Christ when he was four years old. I explained to him what it was, and my son raised his hand and said, I'll take Jesus. And he got saved at four. Because that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. So I'm not bragging. There's nothing to brag on. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm the daddy. Okay? Your father is your first pastor. Your father is supposed to shepherd you and shepherd your soul. And your father is most definitely your first teacher. So your dad is your first fivefold minister, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So let me say this. Stop getting mad at the people at the church because your, your pastor at the church can't make up for all that your biological father did or didn't do. That's your dad's job. Now, he can help. He or she can help. Or, you know, if your pastor is a man or your apostle prophet's a man, they can help. They can bless you. But that's your dad's job. Your father's your first five-fold minister. And so if you're a dad and you're looking at me right now, you need to understand that's what comes along with being a dad. Well, you say, Prophet Taylor, that's really hard. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a lifelong investment, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, <clears throat> again, I'm going to get really personal. The Lord told me one day that my job was to make a disciple, a disciple out of my son. It's my job to make him a follower of Jesus. The Lord said to me, that's your job. Because I was tripping on my career and doing some other things with my music. The Lord's like, no, that's your job. And I had to shut my mouth <laughs> and say, yes, Lord. And I'm so glad that I, I did. I'm glad to this day that I told the Lord yes. But that's your job when you the daddy. You have to apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teach. Your ch that's your job. That's your job. That's your job. Now, now I'm going to segue into why the scripture keeps talking to fathers so much. Part of it is what I just told you, because your father is your first fivefold minister. The second reason uh, is because <clears throat> God made men and women differently. God put the power in the mouth of a man to only have to bless and curse one time. Good God Almighty. I wish somebody would listen to me. Your mother, women have the power to say things over and over and over again. There's a biological reason for that. It's because the verbal center in the brain of a woman is larger and also because her emotional center is closer to and tied into her verbal center. That's why women, when they feel something, they tend to release it verbally. Very, very natural to females. That's not true for us as men. For us as men, our verbal centers are smaller, not connected to our emotional center, which is why when men want to talk about how we feel, we have to think about it. Because sometimes you ask a man how you feel, and we say, well, i got to think about it. Because our verbal and emotional centers aren't really married in the same way that a woman's is. But also, that's on the biological tip. But on the spiritual tip, there, there's so, such a thing called the Father's Blessing. And it's a legacy blessing. It's something that you hand down to your children. And you have the power from God to bless and to curse with this right here one time. Mama can say things over and over and over and over again for years. You as the daddy, you don't have to say stuff but one time. Think about it. Think about when your kids talk about, hey, dad, you remember that time you said this? And hey, dad, remember that time we did that? And hey, dad, remember this? Because it sticks in their soul. You as the father can say or do something one time that changes the entire course of your child's life. That's why the Bible keeps talking to fathers. Not to minimize mothers, but today's Father's Day and the prophetic word is fathers. So if you're looking at me and your mom, do not take offense at what I'm saying. What I'm saying is not to minimize your contribution, but to focus on the function and contribution of the dad because it's Father's Day. And as the daddy, you got the power to bless and curse right here. It's right here. It's a part of the image of God that males carry. Let me say that one more time. It's a part of the image of God because the Bible says in Genesis, male and female created he them. God created humanity in his image. There's parts of God that women carry like uh, nurturing, uh, like milk of life, like unconditional love, like warmth, like a desire for beauty. Uh, all those things uh, tend to be stronger 
in the female, but there's parts of God that we carry as males. And one of the things that you carry as a man and as a daddy is that you got the power to bless and curse one time. Right here. is right here. And that's why the Bible says specifically to you as a father, because you know how we get when we do stuff in anger. Oh, Lord, have mercy. When we do stuff in anger as a dad, if you discipline your child and you're angry, if you're trying to talk to your child and you're angry, when you do stuff like that in that kind of spirit when you're a father, you're going to change them for life. Now, this is going to sound kind of funny, but it's still true. You kind of expect your mother to love you. I, 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 you just kind of expect mama to love you and because you spend the most time with mama. And if your mother nurses you, you nurse at mama's breast and you come to mentally and emotionally understand that mama has the food and mama has the warmness and mama is a, a safe place and so many different kinds of things. But there's something about when your dad says something to you, you get the Superman chest. You say, dun da 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 Whenever your daddy says something, just something inside you just swell up. And if you're a girl, you said, my daddy said I was pretty. You tell everybody you know, my dad thinks I'm pretty. Something about if you're a boy, if your father says he's proud of you, something about you swell up, that Superman chest, come out. And you said, my daddy said he's proud of me, and you strutting around on the playground. You're five years old, and you strutting, okay? Because your father told you he was proud of you, because you got the power, if you the daddy right here, to bless and curse, and you don't have to do it but one time. The reason I'm wincing is because when that's good on the blessing side, it's good. But when it's bad on the cursing side, because you can remember, if your father says something to you, or if you said something as a dad, because you don't have to say things but one time and it's going to resonate. 20 years later, your kid's going to walk up to you. And dad, you remember that time when I was 10 years old and you said, dad, remember that time we went to the zoo and you said, dad, you remember that time we was driving and you said, because that's the power you got as a daddy, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not, that is what God gave us. Mama can just talk and talk and talk. You ain't got to say it but one time. Okay? That's why the Bible keeps addressing these commandments to the fathers. You need to understand your position in the family. You need to understand what it is that God gave you. Okay? And use this right here to bless them children. And all the times you want to curse them, here's a technique to use. Call one of your friends and, and vent at your friends as somebody grown. Call your best friend, call your boy, call your bud, call somebody, and just say, dog, I'm frustrated right now. You know how frustrated I am? And let it out. Don't let that out on your children. <laughs> let that out on somebody grown. Let that out on your friends. Get that anger out and then deal with your children in a calmer state and where you're not just spewing off the top because it's easy to get angry as a parent. We all get angry as parents. Uh, pastors get angry. Pastors are our spiritual fathers. You can't tell me Moses didn't get angry. You can't tell me sometimes your pastor hasn't been angry because when we're acting like children, sometimes that just makes dad upset. So don't go on a guilt trip about it, but I'm saying use a technique of pointing your, that, that hot anger Talk to one of your friends. Don't talk to your kids when you're in that state. And then after you've calmed down and you took the edge off, then come back and talk to your children. And you'll be much more calm and much more effective. Because remember, remember, it's all right here for you. As a man, you've got to say it one time. Okay, so let me uh, show you a few other of these scriptures and then I'll be done. <clears throat> oh, now you heard me say this before. You heard me say this many times before, but it bears repeating on Father's Day. Malachi 4 and 6. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Malachi is what they call a minor prophet, but not because his message was unimportant. They call Malachi a minor prophet only because the books are smaller. So when you see major prophets in the Old Testament, major prophets means the books are really long. Uh, 60 plus chapters, like in Isaiah's case. And Jeremiah, too, they had a lot to say. Some of those prophets, their books are very small. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, those, those books are three, four, five chapters at best. 
That's what it means to be a minor prophet, not a less important message, but rather just a smaller book. Because Malachi is powerful. If you think Malachi is powerful, you've never read it. Malachi 4 and 6 out of the Berean Study Bible. And he will turn the hearts of, uh, well, let me read verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. That verse is why I don't care if people laugh at me for being a prophet or if they laugh at me about the prophetic and they say I'm crazy or I'm delusional or whatever kind of negative things people have to say about prophets and the prophetic just bounce off me. I don't care. Do you know why I don't care? Because you're living the word of God every day. The Bible just told you that God can strike the entire planet with a curse and what just dropped this year, COVID-19. What dropped this year? The beer bug, Corona, and the whole earth got smitten. I'm just going to let that sink in. That's why I don't care what people say about the Bible. That's why I don't care what people say about the prophetic. God can do everything he says he can do, and he will do everything just exactly like he said it. It doesn't matter what we think about it. And God says in Malachi 4.6 that the spirit of Elijah the prophet has to come and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. What does that mean in practical terms? It means that you must teach your children to respect you. And if you are a child, you must learn how to respect your dad. God does not say honor thy father and thy mother if they're perfect. Now, I am not talking about abuse. Abuse is not okay. I'm not talking about if your parents are abusing you, because that's not okay. Your parents are not supposed to abuse you. That's not what I mean, okay? So don't twist what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's okay for parents to abuse their children. That is incorrect. That is wrong. What I am saying is that even if your parents do the best they can, they're still not going to be perfect. God never told you to honor them because they were perfect. God told you to honor your father and your mother, period, dot, full stop. That's the end of the commandment. Because it's because of them that you are who you are. It's because of them that you came into this world. And every good thing that God poured into you, he used the genetics of your bloodline to make it happen. That's why you're supposed to honor what you come from, even though they're not perfect. So God says what he's looking for, he's looking for fathers to have your heart towards your child to make your child your priority, to be sure that you do what God has commanded you to do as the daddy and be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to that boy or that girl, okay? But as the child, even as a grown child, it is your responsibility to honor your father and your mother. Today we're talking about fathers. So again, mothers, I'm not trying to minimize your contribution. It's just Father's Day. It's your job as a grown child to honor your daddy. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said, you're supposed to honor your daddy. Your heart's supposed to be toward him. Well, my daddy wasn't perfect. Then dwell on the things that he did right. Well, he didn't do everything right. Then dwell on the stuff he did do right. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm, it's finna get ugly up in here now. You think I was raw before? It's finna get real now. Some parents make a point of poisoning the child against the other parent. I stop by to tell you and adjure you in the name of Jesus Christ and according to the Holy Scripture, stop doing that. Stop making your child hate their mama. Stop making your child hate their daddy because God Almighty said, when you do stuff like that and the heart of the child is not towards the father, he's going to smite the whole earth with a curse. Okay? Malachi 4 and 6, read it for yourself. I'm not making that up. Stop. If you're doing it, now if you're not doing it, I'm not talking to you. If you are doing it, you have done it. You need to repent. You need to stop trying to poison the heart of your child against their mother or their father. God Almighty, the one that invented children, is looking for that child to honor the father, the heart 
must be towards the father. Do you know why? Because even if your daddy didn't do everything right, sometimes with time, parents and children grow up. Maybe your parents had you when they were very, very young and they were still new to the planet themselves. Like if your parents became parents as teenagers. If you became a parent at like 15, you was alone on the planet a decade and a half. Then you had another life to take care of. That means you're 30 with a 15 year old. Okay? Well, I start by to tell you that we learn and grow as we go through life. And sometimes the mistakes that your parents made at a certain stage of life they learn better later on because sometimes everybody in the mix has to grow. If you are still harping on and beating up on and tripping on and angry about and pointing back to past stuff, you're going to bring a curse into your house. Oh, I don't want no curse like that in my house. I don't want no curse like that in my house. You need to teach that child to honor the daddy, in spite of the daddy's failures, because what can happen when that happens is that if God has called your father, caused your father to grow up and mature, that means your father will still have some things to pour into you at later stages. Did you ever think about that? Did you know that your childhood is not the only time you're going to need your dad? Did you know that? Did you know my father, my father is dead physically. My father is with me every day. There's not a day that goes by I don't think about my dad because I love my dad like nobody else. I loved my dad. I loved my dad. I would have took a bullet from my dad. I loved my dad with all that my little child heart knew how to love. I love my dad. Okay? He's still with me now. Things he said to me when I was 15 years old. I haven't been 15 in a long time. Things he said to me when I was 15 still ring in my head now. They still come back in my soul now. Because he deposited them things in me when I was young. And now they ring in my heart all these years later. That's what I mean when I tell you. But if your father's alive, it's entirely possible that your father has matured some from when he first fathered you. And maybe you didn't have the relationship that you wanted to have when your father was 25 and you were five. But maybe 20 years later, you can have the relationship with your dad you wanted to have when he's 45 and you are 25. Maybe God has worked with him. Maybe he has grown up. Maybe he has realized the error of his ways. And maybe there's some stuff he has to deposit in you now because you need your dad lifelong, not just when you're a kid. That's another reason the Bible is trying to teach us. God is trying to tell us, don't you live your life mad at your father. There might be some things God is trying to bless you with. Don't you know your father can bless you on his way out of this life? Did you know that? Did you know if your father had a policy, your father had an estate, or your father had some real estate, some property, or your father had some stuff that maybe you, you don't know about? Did you know that if you made an effort to try to get that good relationship with your dad, your father might bless you on his way out of this life? Did you know that? But if you spent your life cussing him out, See, something just shudder inside of me when I say that. If you spent your life cussing him out, if you spent your life harping on his faults, if you spent your life always, always talking about all the stuff he did wrong, you going to cut off your own blessing. There are some blessings that God sends through fathers that don't happen in your childhood. They happen later. And if you have not made it your business to forgive all the stuff I talked about earlier, forgiveness, deliverance, healing, and letting God heal you. That means there's some blessings that your father would have dropped on you, but you so busy cussing him out. And every time you sign your check, you sign in his name. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that every time you sign your checks, you sign in his name? Okay, I got two kids. I got a daughter and a son. And every time they sign their checks, they sign Taylor. That's my name. Okay, they're not bastards because of the daddy. It's the daddy's name. Make you be legitimate. Every time you sign your checks, you sign in your daddy's name. No problem, Taylor. You wrong because I named after my mama, not my daddy. You named after your mama and not your daddy. Your mother's name is her father's name. 
That's your grandfather you owe that name to. Every time you sign your check, you sign in a man's name. And you think you have the right to walk around and disrespect him. You are incorrect. You are incorrect. And so the Lord tells us in his word what he wants because he is the ultimate father. He is, his name is the highest name. He is God, our creator, our savior, our redeemer. Okay, he knows what he's talking about because he invented fathers. So don't cut off your later in life blessing and don't bring a curse on your bloodline because the curse your daddy is to curse yourself because every time you sign your checks, you sign in his name. Why would you bring that curse into your bloodline? Because I stop by to tell you, if you're still carrying all that anger and resentment and bitterness, you're going to pass it on to your kids. I know you don't think you will. I know you think you're going to be better than that. I know you think ah, it's not going to be me. You're incorrect. If you got all that in here, it's going to come out here. That's the way life works. Life flows from the invisible to the visible. Things live in the invisible world and they come out here in the natural world. That's the way God made everything, remember? God said, let there be light. What do you think light was? It was in the invisible where God is. And then God brought it out here. Then he shaped the sun and the moon and the stars and the comets. Okay? Things flow from the invisible to the visible. And if you have something in your spirit, the breath of life inside of you, if it's in you, it's going to come out here. So that's why my brothers and my sisters... I strongly, strongly encourage you, urge you, and adjure you in the name of Jesus and according to the Holy Scriptures that you, if you are a dad, that you turn your heart towards your children. Forgive them. Why? Because Father God forgives us. Lord, have mercy. Don't make me start shouting on this broadcast. Because my Heavenly Father forgave me. He didn't require perfection from me as a son. He requires growth. Let me say that one more time. God does not require you to be perfect without flaw because nobody is perfect without flaw except him. God requires you to grow. Be better this year than you were last year. Be better with your money this year than you were last year. Be better with your relationships this year than you were last year. Be better with your diet this year than you were or last year. That's what Father God requires of me. He does not require perfection because I can't give him that. He requires growth. And he loves me regardless. If I never grew, he'd still love me. If I never did anything he wanted me to do, he would still love me because his love is not based on how I act. That's the model that you, if you are daddy, you love them children, not based on how they act, but you teach them how to act because you love them, not to have to earn your love. So if you are a daddy and you listen to me right now, forgive your children. Learn how to model after Father God. Do not require perfection. Require growth. If your son is four years old, your daughter is four years old, expect them to be four years old. Don't try to make them be 16. They'll be there soon enough. You don't have to worry. Just keep living. If your children are 15 and 16 years old, don't try to make them look at life through 30 year old eyes. What they know about being 30? What they know about being 40? You're getting all mad at them because they're reacting like they're 15. Of course they're going to react like they're 15 because they're 15. Okay? Stop expecting perfection. Do like Father God and expect growth. Say, son, daughter, I expect you to grow every year. I want you to be better this year than you were last year. But I love you regardless because that's what Father God says to us. And if you are a child, even if you are a grown child, forgive your father. Stop cursing his name. And if he's alive, see if you can reconcile the relationship. Don't you know? <clears throat> see, see, there's a whole other thing I could do here on humility. What I found out is that humility solves a lot of problems. I found out that the reason Jesus was able to die, the reason Father was able to offer Jesus up and the reason Jesus was able to die was because they have humility. And it just blows my mind that the great almighty God is humble, but he is, they are. Father said, I'm not going to trip on just myself. I'm going to give them what they need to be right. And that's the life of my son. 
Jesus said, I'm not going to trip on myself because I don't have no sin. I don't have to die. I don't have to do nothing. I'm Jesus. But he didn't trip on that. He said, but I'm going to lay my life down for them. They did that because they have humility. <sighs> don't you know that sometimes just a phone call can change everything? Don't you know that sometimes you can just say, I'm sorry. Don't take but two words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. I've been mad at you for years now, but I realize I need to forgive you, Dad. I'm sorry. And if you the daddy, say, I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry, daughter. I, I really didn't treat you right. I really, I was gone too much or, or I didn't pay the money like I should have or I was yelling all the time. or I just didn't do my job. And I'm very sorry because I should have done better by you. And don't you know that conversation can change the entire course of your life? Do you understand that? And all it takes is just a little bit of humility, just a little bit of humbling yourself. If you don't, do you know what's going to happen? God's going to bring back everything on you that you said against your parents. So that's your choice. If you want to humble yourself and forgive, you can wipe the slate clean, wipe the deck clean, and move forward with a better relationship. If you want to stay mad, keep cussing them out, Keep talking about them like a dog. Then everything you said against your parents, God going to bring it back on you. That's your choice here today. So let me wrap this up. I've gone longer than I meant, but I wanted to be sure I released everything that the Spirit of God gave me to release on this Father's Day. So I encourage you, those of you that are looking at me right now, go back to the top of this video. You need to watch this video from the top. Watch from the top uh, so you can get all of the teaching, all the instructions and all the revelation and all of the scriptures. That's why I tend to prophesy with scriptures because I want you to show, I want to show you the foundation of what I'm saying. Because sometimes people think that prophecy is just pulling stuff out of thin air. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's rooted in the written word. Okay, the prophetic word is going to line up with the written word. They're not going to be in conflict. Okay. All right. So now, those of you uh, that watch me regularly know that I don't do this for money. I do this because God called me to do it. But if you want to sow into my ministry. Many times I've had more than one person tell me they're looking for places to sow because they want to bless people that are trying to do stuff with their ministry. Well, I'm writing books. My prophetic devotional is coming out. I'm writing this really exciting book I want to tell you about, but I can't tell you about it yet. I'm making more and more music videos, and then I'm working on my long-term project with the homeless. So any money that you sow into me is actually going to expand my ministry. And when you bless a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. And what that means is that every way that God blesses me, he'll bless you when you sow into it. When you sow into any kind of ministry, the blessings that are on that ministry come in your life. So for example, if you are following someone and they lived a long time and they were healthy for a very long time, they lived until their 90s and their 100s and they stayed strong and healthy to the end, if you give money to them, that longevity blessing comes on you. That's what that means. If you uh, follow somebody and they have strong wisdom that when you hear them talk, you hear that they understand because the word of wisdom means the way heaven does things, the way God thinks, the way he does things, and they have strong, strong wisdom. If you follow that ministry and you sow into a ministry of strong wisdom, then that spirit of wisdom will come upon you. Um, if you're struggling with fertility, if you're looking at me right now and the doctors told you you can't have children, you know what you need to do? You need to find a family ministry. Find a family ministry where the parents had lots of children, lots of children, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, you know, huge, those, those big families, so into that ministry and a spirit of fertility will come upon you and God will bless the fruit of your womb because you sowed into that ministry. That's what that means. That's what that works. That's how that works. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to uh, sow into my ministry, you can give through my Zelle. My Zelle is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. Or you can give through my cash app. My cash app is a dollar sign, DMT, that's my initials, and then two capital I's. DMT2, not the number two, but DMT, and then two capital I's, DMT2, after the dollar sign. That's my cash app if you want to bless me. And that's where the money's going because I'm expanding books, music, ministry to the homeless, that whole thing. That's what I'm doing because I'm trying to expand, uh, expand that ministry, all right? All right. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for watching. You know, I do New Music Friday when I have new music to release on noon. 
Um, check out my 150 hymns project. I'm writing a fresh hymn for every song. My pro a prophetic devotion is on sale. Um, all those links I'll put in on my Twitter and on uh, my Facebook Live. So if you watch me on Facebook Live, I'll put all the links in there. If you follow me on Twitter, it's PDTSOTC. PDTSOTC. That stands for Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. Okay? So one more thing I want to do before we close out. I want to go back in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost, is there anything else he wants me to release? Because I think I'm feeling a prayer coming. When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is there anything else he wants me to do? Because the way you charge your spirit and the way you get your spirit more full of the Holy Spirit is through prayer language. That's part of what tongues is. That's why you see me do that, okay? So I'm going to do that right now. And if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen, okay? Yes, yes, okay, yeah, I was feeling that prayer coming, here it is. But I want the Holy Ghost to pray through me, so I have to surrender my tongue to him. Father, high and holy Father, there is a burden today. The Spirit of God is grieved, Father, for all of the broken family relationships, the broken men who don't know how to be fathers, who don't understand the power, who don't know your love, who don't understand their responsibility, who are condemning themselves because they don't know that Jesus already took the condemnation. So Father, in the name of Jesus, please release a spirit of eye opening, release a spirit of revelation that all the men that are fathers or even potential fathers, that they will know your love, know your forgiveness, know your strength, for you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Know how to rule with love, know how to nurture and admonish and teach their children. And, and for the brokenness, that the brokenness would be healed, both for the fathers and the sons and the sons' sons and the sons' sons' sons, even down to the third and fourth generation, that you would bring healing and restoration in the bloodline. No more broken families, no more bitterness, but that we would flow in your love. You are the vine and we are the branches, that each generation of fathers and sons and daughters would line up underneath you in submission to your authority and begin to draw from your love, your spirit, your wisdom, your leadership, your example. Now I pray this by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the true and the living Son of God, the Alpha and the, and the Omega, the first and the last. He that was dead and is alive, he that has the keys of hell and death. It's in his name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much to those of you that watch me live. God bless those of you that are watching me on the replay. God bless those of you that are listening to the podcast. Again, go back to the top of this video. Watch it from the beginning so you get all the scriptures, all the revelation, all the wisdom, all the encouragement, and all the prayers. All right? All right. Amen, amen. I'll be here same time next uh, Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our next uh, edition of the weekly live prophetic word okay and if you want to find all my stuff in one place that's on my website website prophetdavidtaylor.org p-r-o-p-h-e-t-d-a-v-i-d-t-a-y-l-o-r.org all my broadcasts on my podcasts on my blog posts on my books on my music on my everything's on my website prophetdavidtaylor.org on my social media it's all right there okay amen god bless you enjoy your father's day I know most of us still on quarantine, so maybe buy your father a meal or at least FaceTime him. <laughs> FaceTime him or Zoom chat him or Google room something, your dad, and look him in his face and tell him that you love him and let him tell you that he loves you. Okay? And your day will be blessed. Amen. Amen. And I will see you next time. Jesus said, Come.